Hi guys, it's Miss Wilson. Uh, this is the first video of many that I'm going to do. Um, I'm gonna try to keep these videos to about 30 minutes long, give or take five minutes, you know, um, and they can cover more than a day's worth of information, but if I keep it to about half an hour, it should be about a day's worth. So um, keep in mind that in class, these videos, uh, well, the videos reflect very much what we're doing in class, but um, it takes a little longer to do it in class because there's more pauses for me to have you work with a partner. Um, plus the videos themselves can and should be paused for you to do some readings and some reflections and answer questions and everything. So um, the video should take you around an hour to complete like it would in class. Um, but the nice thing about these videos is it is um, it is what you need to do if you miss class. It is a perfect way to make up the work that you missed. And so if you happen to be absent for vacation or a sick day or anything, um, you can check in and see like which video to watch. Um, you might even be able, if you've been keeping track of things, to figure out which video you need to watch on your own. So um, without further ado, we're going to go through the very first lesson that I have on like for videos. Um, so if you were to come into my classroom, the very first thing that you'd want to do is you would want to, uh, on this day, you would go and you'd put your phone away in the, um, uh, the little pockets. Um, there is like a phone charging station by my desk, like on the, the, the far side of the room from the door. And so you'll go and you'll put your phone away. You might plug it in if it needs a, a quick charge and you'll check the board for bell work. Probably on this day, the bell work was to find your seat again. It looks like, it looks like I've got a, some seating charts here to remind people where they sit. And then we were gonna go over the syllabus together. Um, and then for every activity that we do, um, you'd get your syllabus out for this. Um, I would recommend getting your syllabus out, especially since it might be a little different than the one I have pulled up here. But for this activity, um, I would expect in class that you would have your voice at a level zero when other people are talking. And uh, if I have called on you, that you would have your voice at a level three, which is like presentation level, um, so everyone can hear you. If you, if you haven't been to class yet because you are like finishing up a vacation and you're, I know it's the beginning of the year, but you know, let's say you haven't been at all and you don't know what these mean, come see me. They are posted on um, the cabinets, but um, it could be good for clarification to explain what that means. Um, so we're gonna talk through the syllabus and we're not in class, so you don't have to worry about voice levels. The syllabus looks kind of like this. Uh, it may have changed by the time you guys actually get to class um, in the fall. I, this is Right now it's the summertime, I'm just recording these in advance. Uh, but it should look pretty much like this. The required materials, I'm gonna tell you what those are for. I don't think I need to explain what a scientific calculator is for. I will clarify that a graphing calculator is A-OK. -okay. Um, but you need something that is at least a scientific quality or better um, in order to do a lot of the functions that we need for chemistry, okay? And you need a, bi a one inch binder with lined loose leaf paper. I recommend um, a one inch. You, you can probably get away with a half inch. You definitely don't need anything bigger than a one inch, um, but you do want loose leaf paper, and by that I mean this kind. Um, and there's a very, there's a very specific reason for that. We have a specific, specific order of things that we learn in, but like the categories that we learn in, like the standards or the learning goals, um, sometimes we go a little bit out of order. So it's helpful um, to keep track of those here. The next thing on our list is a post-it or a sticky tabs. Um, I don't mean an entire like post-it. <laughs> Um, like I, you don't need one that size, but if you were to cut it into strips, you could use that. And I would probably just keep track of standard one. This is learning goal one. 
standard two, and so forth. And you can use these as tabs. Actually, the stuff that we're gonna be going over today and tomorrow is all part of the introduction to chemistry. And they're not part of a standard or a learning goal. Um, nothing that you'll be graded over, if that makes sense. So I would actually start probably on the next page. And I wouldn't actually put the tabs there until we get there, but any case, eventually you'll have um, tabs that kind of run down the edge so you can keep track of where each standard is, okay? So that's gonna help you later when you're studying for bigger exams like the final um, and et cetera. It can help you with lots of stuff. So staying organized is helpful. I do recommend a pencil rather than a pen. Highly, highly recommend a pencil. It's better for learning and you can erase it, duh. Um, and then um, this, this one, a contribution to classroom supplies is something that I'm gonna go over with you together in class. So if you missed class, you need to email me or go check Google Classroom. Everything is gonna be turned in here. Announcements will be turned, or announcements will be made here, such as like the weekly schedule, um, which I try to keep up on, but sometimes I sometimes fail. Um, or you, yeah, it might show up in classwork. Okay, so you can always look under that tab. Um, any case, um, supplies will probably not be in classwork. <laughs> um, this may look a little different this year, and I don't want to um, say in advance what I think that's going to be because um, it may not be that. So, um, but when I say classroom supplies, I mean you'll have some contribution to either like the shared markers that we have or the shared glue sticks or the shared books that we have, um, stuff like that. Instructor policies, okay, so tardiness is a big deal. Um, like I said, I already told you what to do when you walk in, you go and you look at the bell work, you put your phone away, uh, the bell work is displayed right behind my desk, right in the same corner where you put your phone. So you should naturally look and see what it is I expect of you. I do not want to spend time at the beginning of classes telling you that you need to sit down and get out your syllabus and talk to your partner about this or that. That information is already on the board and you need to get used to it as fast as you can because there might be days when the printer jammed and I have to go deal with that for the first couple of minutes of class. And I don't want to have to worry that you don't know what it is you're expected to do. Um, you will always know what you're expected to do. Um, and likewise, if I don't have to leave, I will be taking that time to um, record attendance. And so that time is important that you use the first couple of minutes for that. And I don't wanna have to tell you what you need to do. So by the time the bell rings, you have to be sitting, even if you came from like the middle school for, you know, from band or something. Classroom expectations. Okay, this is kind of, these are based off of my pet peeves, you guys, like pretty much. Um, these are like rules based off of like the most annoying things that kids do. <laughs> so my expectation on homework is that almost every time I assign it, it's due the next day. I don't assign very much homework. I really don't. And I don't even ask you to get it right. I just want you to try and you'll get credit for it if you try. So there's absolutely no excuse to come into class the next day and tell me like, oh, Miss, Miss Wilson, like I couldn't get it to load. I couldn't get my work to load. You know, you had some time to do that. Most students telling me, I've been trying for the last hour to get my stuff to load into Google Classroom. Most of the time, that's not true. Most of the time, they've been trying since the beginning of passing period to get it to load, and they just, they forgot about it. Don't wait until the last minute. Don't, don't expect it to load in five minutes uh, before class. You cannot have your phone out in my class to let it load. Um, I might make an exception here and there for students that are typically um, very good about turning things in. If I feel like I can trust you to upload something and not play on your phone, I might let you do that. But typically, you're not allowed to have your phone. So you, you cannot have your, like your phone out uploading homework. And likewise, we're gonna, like pretty much every time you have homework, we're gonna go over it together at the beginning of class. And so there's never going to be an opportunity for you to finish the homework during class and turn it in at the end of class. I have other activities planned for you during that time, and you can't use that time to 
finish homework. So um, please make sure you get it turned in in advance. If you have an issue, contact me directly, like email me or something, we'll work it out. I do not want to use class time on homework. Okay, then, um, oh, um, you know what, I have one last thing to say about that, but I think I'll come back to it. Come prepared to class, please. Make sure you have everything you need, especially when we get to the math unit. We will, we will not use the calculator very often, but when we get to the math unit, you're gonna need it every day. You're gonna wanna pull it out at the beginning of class, and you're gonna want to have it at the ready. And you don't wanna wait until the test to pull out your calculator, because I'm not going to be able to teach you during the test how to use your calculator. So make sure you always have the things that you need. Be respectful. Um, to be honest, it takes a lot to offend me. It takes a lot to make me upset or mad. Um, and I'm not asking you to be respectful to protect my feelings. It's not about that. The problem with being disrespectful is that you take away from the learning of other people. If you are disrespectful to your fellow classmates by being disruptive, talking out of turn, tearing them down by making fun of them, yeah, maybe they asked a stupid question, but that's not a good enough reason to bring them down. Um, if you refuse to do what I've asked you to do, or if you damage property, or if you are disrespectful toward me directly, that takes away from the opportunity of the entire class to learn because other students, unfortunately, can sometimes listen and lose a little confidence in the teacher. It's absolutely not okay to be disrespect disrespectful to a teacher ever. Um, likewise, if I'm talking, you need to listen. If another peer has been called on, if I called on your friend and they're the one, then they're the ones expected to talk, not you. Um, in by respecting other people this way, you ensure that the classroom is an open place to learn. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Yes, some questions are kind of dumb, but I don't ever want you to feel dumb. I don't ever want you to feel like you can't ask an honest question in my class. I don't ever want you to feel like I'm like you're going to get put down for participating and learning. Failure is a part of it. Asking silly questions can be a part of it. We need to make sure that we are supportive of everybody and that we're not distracting from their learning. Um, and of course, touching others. I don't think I need to explain that. Just be respectful. Okay, cell phones. I already kind of told you, you can't use cell phones. There will be exceptions to this, but I will let you know. Otherwise, your phone goes straight in the pocket and doesn't come out until the end of class. Um, yeah, we may revisit that in the middle of the school year after I've deemed you um, not worthy. That's not the right word. Once I've decided that you are trustworthy enough, you can have it, have it in your bag. Plagiarism, there are very few things, like I said, that hurt my feelings or make me mad. For whatever reason, plagiarism really gets me going. I don't like plagiarism and I don't like cheating. It is so disrespectful to take somebody else's work and try to pass it off as your own. Like, first of all, it's pretty obvious when it happens. You will get caught. Um, just just don't do that, okay? You, you risk getting a zero on everything if you do that. It's taken very, very seriously. And if you tried pulling something like that at the college level, you would be expelled and good luck finding another college that will take you. So you need to know how serious that is. Um, you have to be honest about your work. These standards, these probably look a little bit different. These are probably like something you've never seen in another class before. This is how I do my grading. These are basically just learning goals for you. So the first learning goal is that you are able to describe the properties of matter and identify chemical and physical changes. So after reading through these, I wanna know what is one of the uh, learning goals here that seems familiar to you? Or maybe it just looks like something you might have a little bit of understanding about coming into that standard. What is something that, you, that looks familiar? Okay, so chances are if, I mean, not there's no right or wrong answer, but chances are you probably said one of these three. These three all include some review from like physical science in eighth grade year. So uh, we will definitely build on what you have already learned. 
And there will be new things to learn in each of those uh, learning goals, even if you know some. And you might know some of these other things too, properties of elements, actually chemical bonding. Some people know a little bit about that by the time they get to chem. I don't know. Um, tell me about one of these that looks particularly intimidating. Which one looks confusing to you or especially demanding or intimidating? Okay, so for this one, I, if I were you, I probably would have chosen one with vocabulary terms that I don't recognize. Something like significant figures, the mole. Um, you probably don't know what those are. You probably don't know what redox is. Um, and even if you know the, the words in this and the vocabulary, you may still be a little lost. Like conversions and ratios to predict the amount of substances needed to run a chemical reaction and predicting the amount of product created. Like for heaven's sakes, this sounds complicated. And guess what? It is. This is actually the hardest standard um, for most students. Um, I have conveniently separated these into semesters for you. All the semester one content comes before this line. And then everything after is typically stuff we cover second semester. Um, the last couple years, I have planned it in this order, but we've been running a little bit short on time by the time we get done with six. So what tends to happen if that's the case is I will skip directly to eight, nine, and 10, which all have to do with math. And I will skip number seven. And if I have to do that, because we run low on time, uh, we will take this standard and put it at the beginning of semester two. So we often end up a little bit out of order there. But this is my ambitious schedule. We'll go through number one through 19. One at a time or two at a time. Okay. For each of these standards, you get a grade out of eight. Just one. For the whole semester, you can get one grade for standard one, one grade for standard two. An eight out of an eight is 100%, which is, which is an A. This means that you have a complete understanding. And so, for example, if you had an eight out of eight for standard 19, you have a complete understanding of gases and uh, thermochemistry. It is difficult to get an eight out of eight. Uh, well, it is difficult to come out of the class with an A. Let's put it that way. You can get an eight out of eight pretty well on any of the standards, but not on every standard. And so there's an average for all the standards. Now, um, if you got four out of eight, what percentage would that be? So this is like if you didn't understand anything, a four out of eight is a 50%. And 50%, honestly, is not that bad. Most classes, if you do really poorly, you could potentially get a 30% or a 20%, you know. Um, and if you leave a huge portion of your test blank or you don't take a test and you don't make it up, I can give you a zero or something less than a four. But if you try and you put something down for every question on the test, this is the lowest score you can get. It is difficult to get an A in my class. It is also really rare to flunk it. <laughs> it's very, very rare to earn such low scores that you end up with an F in the class. We've got middle ground here. Um, I will say if you do poorly on one of these standards at, on the test and you, um, and you do some extra work outside of class and you feel like you've increased your understanding, you can come back and meet me outside of class and we can do like a short little interview style quiz, that kind of thing. And I can potentially replace your bad grade with a better grade. Surprisingly, a few students take me up on that. And I guess that is fine with me, but um, it's available to you if you want to increase your grades. Um, these standards are not replaceable. These standards, you, you, they will be assessed multiple times, but you only um, get one shot at each attempt. So um, you cannot replace a grade, but you can get another grade for the same standard. And um, there's an averaging there. So... This one has to do with vocabulary and using it correctly. Uh, there's so many opportunities for you to use vocabulary. That can be assessed on a paper that you write. That can be assessed on a test. It can be assessed on a lab. So the, that gets assessed multiple times throughout the year. That's why I put an asterisk here. 
This is also assessed multiple times throughout the year. I actually don't have like a set number of assessments for nature of science. I just kind of do it as it seems natural to assess that. And again, it can be assessed on tests. It can be assessed on papers, papers and stuff like that. So you'll get multiple chances at that score as well. These two with the two asterisks, um, these are assessed on labs. And um, this basically, the first one has to do with observations and data and collecting data correctly. And then the second one is being able to analyze it. It's pretty simple. Those are the two grades you get on um, labs. Actually, you get one more, but I'll, we'll, we'll, it's down below. These two grades show up pretty much exclusively um, on papers. So if I've had you write something, like a paper, this is, that's when you'll get um, assessed on those. And pretty much I just assess that. Uh, we do one paper in the fall and one paper in the spring. Okay, then um, these student, that was a, those, are, those were general science standards. They don't have to do with chemistry necessarily, but science in general. These ones are student practices. That's a nice word for behaviors. These are the behaviors I want to see you doing. Um, these first two, these will be assessed every single week. I'm gonna go through Google Classroom and I'm gonna see how well you did with turning things in on time. And that's where you get this one, academic responsibility. I may also take a look at your work and give you a little bit of feedback if it's not great. I might say, okay, you're getting partial credit for this, but you, you didn't complete this assignment. You only did half of it. Or you didn't do this the way I asked you to. Some points deducted. And by deducted, I mean you might get seven out of eight instead of eight out of eight. Um, but that's just the homework standard. Academic responsibility is a homework grade. This part, if I had to oversimplify it, it's not homework. This is more like in-class participation. You need to be engaged in learning, uh, asking, answering questions, taking notes, coming in for help, and collaborating with others. This one will also be assessed on some labs. I may not assess it on every lab, but um, this you get points deducted if you like forget to put your goggles on when you're around chemicals, or if you don't clean up your station, stuff like that. And all of these, are on the same scale, four through eight. If you consistently display the skill or the understanding of the concept, then you get eight out of eight. If you basically never do it, you get a four out of eight. I think it's pretty straightforward. And again, you can't replace those grades. This class is heavy, heavy on content. So you have to know the concepts in chemistry in order to do well. If you don't, you just, you're not gonna be able to get a very good grade. There is a buffer here for you. This 15% is intended as a buffer for you because I know that there are some of you out there that work really, really, really hard. Those of you that like to jump through hoops and get the grade are gonna be frustrated in this class because you can't just jump through a hoop. You have to understand it deeply. If you don't understand it deeply, this is meant, meant as a buffer for you. And it is the difference between a letter grade for some people. You know, some people without the help of the, all the homework that they did, they might earn a C in the class. Whereas with all of their hard work, they are earning a B, okay? At the very end of the, so until we get to the very end of the semester in the final, this, these are both weighted a little heavier. It's out of 100, like this 90% um, is like out of 100. It's hard to, I can show you the math if you get confused, but. When we get to finals, it's worth 10% of your grade. Um, and I just kind of reiterated all that information here as far as the content standards. You get one final score for each semester, but you can replace a grade with a higher one. Students always ask, can you, can you um, lose your high, higher grade if you retest and it's lower? And I would say, short answer, yes, yes you can. <laughs> If you didn't learn it very well the first time, you just lucked out on the test, um, which is not likely. It's possible to have your grade decrease later, but it's not likely because if you've learned it really well, you know it. Um, there does come, a, there is a cutoff 
where I can't update grades anymore. And then for the science and student practices, uh, they, they cannot be replaced. You get an average grade for all attempts. And I can change. I can change things. Your student agreement form will need to be signed and turned in. May not quite look like this, but should look kind of like that. And you have a safety form that you need to have signed and filled out and turned in as well. So keep your eyes out for due dates for that on Google Classroom. Okay, that's the syllabus. I'm trying to go through this kind of quickly. I've got like five minutes left. All right, so I'm going to, during class, or I, maybe I already have during class, um, I'm gonna share with you guys some of the advice that students from previous years gave. Um, but my advice to you is these three things, and not necessarily in this order. Um, get a planner and use it, okay? Get a planner and use it. Most of the homework is due the next day, and it's really not that hard to keep up on it. It's not even like that much homework, you know? But you should be organized and paying attention to due dates. And every once in a while, we'll have stuff like, you know, you have to bring a t-shirt this day, or money by this day, or... I don't know, sometimes there's other deadlines, but it's it's helpful to get a planner and use it. I would recommend that so that you can keep track of all your classes. Do the homework. Now, I was gonna say something about this earlier. I'll tack it in here. I'm gonna ask you a question. So, why is it not a good idea, even though the homework doesn't count for very much, why is it not a good idea to skip the homework and just watch us go over it together in class? Okay, it is a bad idea to skip the homework and just watch it in class because what happens is you're going to sit there and hear all the answers and you're going to think, oh, that makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, okay, yeah, that sounds good. Okay. And you're going to have no clue if you can actually do it yourself. Trying it and failing it, not always failing it, but trying and failing are a very important part to learning. I mean, think about when you learn to walk you fell down so many times in order to learn how to walk. It's, it's part of the process. If you don't give yourself opportunities to try and realize that you don't know it, and then all of a sudden you sit down and you try to take a test without any attempts at this before that point, you're going to really, really regret that decision. The moment that you notice that you have a really bad grade or that you don't understand it, you need to come in and get help and see if we can't help you. Um, and do the homework. Please make sure you're doing the homework and participating when we go over it. Stay organized, notes start tomorrow. Make sure you've got your binder ready to go because um, without it, you will, um, you will have trouble knowing what to study for and what to study. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to get much further into this. We're gonna mark the text. Um, and there's a, an article I want you to read about marking the text. We're gonna do that really quickly at the, at the end of this video. Um, in class, it's a handout, it's a packet, and it doesn't include all, everything from this website, but the link is here for you. It is this document here. AVID is a program in inner city public schools that assist students that are typically higher achievers um, it helps them to continue getting really good grades and it gives them opportunities to, um, um, to look forward to college, if that makes sense. AVID looks really good on an academic transcript for inner city public school kids. Um, any case, you get, we don't have access to that, but we can see some of their strategies for learning that help you keep your grades up and marking the text. So go ahead and read this, take, take your time you want to read page one and page two and page three. And everything after that is not in regards to science and you don't need it. Okay. Wow, my internet is not catching up. There we go. Okay, so there's three different things that you mark with. Numbers go next to the paragraphs. It's intended to help you find a spot really quickly when the teacher draws your attention to a specific paragraph. What do you circle in the text? What do you circle? 
You're going to be circling key terms and phrases. Guys, I had that highlighted for you. Easy question. You need to circle key terms and phrases, okay? Um, and if you scroll down, it clarifies that for science, key terms could also include authors or scientists. It can include vocabulary words, definitely includes vocabulary. Names of people, theories like um, atomic, um, atomic theory and um, famous experiments, properties, elements, anytime, anytime that it seems to be the focus of the sentence or the paragraph, that's what you circle. And what do you underline? Hopefully you said that you underline the author's um, claims or supporting phrases. So descriptions, definitions, evidence. Typically what I find is that these things directly explain or support the thing that you circled. They clarify, they explain, they add to the thing that you circled. That's pretty often the case. So um, let me decide if I'm gonna, if we're gonna practice that really fast. Mm. Yeah, we'll practice it and then I'm gonna, going to give you kind of what I'll, we'll, we'll just keep moving along. So marking the text, um, our discussion in class, you would follow these expectations, but this is a video. Okay, so um, I wrote this down on a piece of paper so that we can kind of see it up close. Um, but chemistry as a discipline is based on a number of other fields. Because it is a measurement-based science, math plays an important role in its study and usage. A, pro a proficiency in high school level algebra should be all that is needed in this text and can be obtained from a number of sources. Chemistry itself is determined by the rules and principles of physics. So this is a paragraph that we are going to um, practice doing our marking of the text. Okay. So um, we would read through it first and we did that. And then we would mark that as paragraph one. Chemistry as a discipline is based on a number of other fields. The topic of the sentence or the subject is chemistry. And in fact, it is like a vocabulary term for us in this, in this um, context. It is a, a discipline based on, so you could underline discipline if you want, or you could just say based on a number of other fields. Uh, based on, I'm going to say other fields. Because it is a measurement-based science, math plays an important role in its study and usage. To me, measurement-based science kind of clarifies what chemistry is. Oh, let me turn this light on. That's helpful. But just, there we go. So I'm going to underline that section also. Math is another term that's being introduced here. Math plays an important role in its study and usage. A proficiency in high school level algebra should be all that is needed in this text. Now be careful here because you might be tempted to say proficiency is the subject of the sentence. And it is, but we don't necessarily need to circle that. What is it getting at? Math, uh, in this case, is clarified as algebra. Now, to me, it's another term, so I'm just going to circle it like it's a term. It should be... <laughs> My goodness. It should be all that is needed. I don't know why my dog is barking like this. Oh, I know why. Okay. Um, should be all that is needed in this text. And it can be obtained from another of sources. Honestly, I don't think I need to underline any of that. It's just saying you need algebra. Chemistry itself, here's that word again. It's another, it's a term again. Itself is determined by the rules and principles of physics. You can underline or circle that. I'm just going to circle that. And I'll underline the connecting point there. That's what I think we should do. So there's our example. We're going to stop the video there. And we're going to get into some more um, examples of this in the next video. Thanks, guys, for watching. <laughs>